Hey y'all, I hope y'all had a good Christmas. I certainly did. I literally just got in, made myself something to eat, and was about to knock out, but realized that I'm a creature of super habit, so I won't be able to get to bed until I review another Beastars chapter. So I think I'm just gonna do that, even though it's like 4.30 in the morning, but hey. <laughs> Not that I'm complaining, I wanted to see what's going to happen anyway. So, let's just get right into it. Um, a quick recap, last time we left off, Lego C got his ass beat by Tim's killer. Um, he ended up getting away, Jack came to help him, and he ended up going to the back alley market to see Goeen. And ask him to help train him and get him stronger, so... Um, I always think of Beastars as kind of like a sinning because of the themes that it shows but I feel like it's moving towards more shonen territory now so let's see how Legosi's training goes so we are in chapter 63 lighting oil on fire we have a nice little illustration here with Legosi and uh, Louie we haven't seen Louie in quite a few chapters last time we saw him he was hanging out with the Shishigumi oh and Legosi got a haircut I was wondering why he looked different forgot about that so let's jump into it this should be a training chapter okay so we have Goheen here and he's studying canine ecology as well as other carnivores okay that's pretty cool since he is a doctor and all that he's using his medical expertise to figure out how to best help Lego see and train him so I wonder what his training would look like because uh, last time we saw Goheen and him together before they went to go fight the Shishigumi he was offering to help Legosi with therapy um, to control his predatory instincts as well but as far as Goheen's uh, like ritual and stuff we see that he works out a lot so that's probably going to be him Helping uh, Legosi work out. I'm more tired than I thought I was, so I'm gonna try and stay coherent during this. But I got some tea right here. The caffeine should be kicking pretty soon. Okay. It's been four hours, which means he's got three hours left. Might as well check now as check how he's doing. Where does he have him? What is he doing? Hey Legosi, you haven't given in to the pressure, have you? Hey, you better not be asleep. What is this? This is like an icebox. Ah, okay, so he's trained. Okay, so I see what the I see what Goheen's doing to Lego. See, this would be torture to any other animal. Like, if he was a lesser creature, like a lesser animal, and he didn't have the willpower or self control, Lego C would have been devoured this meat right here. And you can see Lego C shaking and like struggling not to eat it because. Let me see, has Lego C Okay, so Lego C hasn't tasted any meat. As far as I remember. I don't know if the, the Shishigumi boss counts when he ripped out his throat. Or at least tried to. Um yeah, I don't think that counts. But that's meat from that's not meat from a carnivore, that's meat from a herbivore. So I think there's a difference in te in taste. So yeah, that's herbivore meat. So yeah, so I get what he's doing. He's trying to, uh, he's trying to steal Legosi's mind and increase his willpower. Like if he can resist eating the meat, then I guess that would bet that that's also it's also training him to not kill Haru eventually. If he's if he's insistent on being around her, if Le if Legosi ever gives in to his instincts even for a minute, like Haru's dead. Even just being around Legosi. It's a it's a threat in and of itself. Even though Legosi is a well intentioned like individual and well intentioned character, there's always that side of him that we have to keep in mind and really be wary about. So this is a nice reminder of what Legosi struggle struggles with, and it's good to see that he's being trained to resist that. His own predatory instincts. Hey, are you even awake? Do you really think I'd be asleep when there's a slab of meat right in front of me? This training is ridiculous. 
this is your third day and you're finally showing some spunk, but it's still not enough. He's been in there for three days? Oh, no, 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 he... Alright, just his third day. <laughs> okay. You chose this path. Accumulate more stress and let it burn you. So this is what happened three days ago. Legacy, you're a carnivore and you want to get physically stronger. Do you know what that means? What does it mean? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take a guess. If he wants to be physically stronger, he has to not train his... Well, he has to train his body, right? That's like the first thing. But even, the, even then, there's only so much you can do with just training on your own. Because think about it like this. Like, in real life terms, what do you need to actually grow strong, right? And get bigger, right? Exercise and diet is one of the most important things. And it's easy to forget. Even though, like, we're reminded, it's easy because we relate to these characters so much and we kind of, like, imprint ourselves onto them that they are not human. <laughs> they are, they are, um, they are animals first and foremost. And Goheen has it, has it easy because panda bears are both, they can, bo they can eat, they're both carnivores and herbivores. They can, they can go, I'm sorry, they're omnivores, so they can eat either or and be just fine. Like, his diet, Goheen, consists pretty much of bamboo grass and he can live off that and grow strong because that's how his body is built Legosi over here doesn't have that luxury he has the body of a great wolf one of the biggest canines in the world mind you right and even though he has no problem eating like you know vegetables and stuff he there's always going to be that deep seated craving for meat because that's what his physiology needs to grow strong. It's, so I think he's gonna say meat, because that just that, that's what makes sense. Because think of it like this: it's not just legacy; it's all the carnivores in the world. Meat is forbidden, right? It, it's a way of like uh, keeping the carnivore. Uh, what's it? What's it called? I'm trying to think of the word screw it I'll, I'll just forget about it for right now but it's the way it's a way of keeping the carnivores in check you know how can you get how can you get addicted to something if you're not exposed to it but the thing about that is it's what their body naturally craves regardless just because of what they are fruits and vegetables can only take you so far you need sustenance of some kind and I believe it's gonna be meat it <laughs> Okay. It means you have to eat meat. Meat from the back alley market. A carnivore needs meat to build up a body that's suited for combat. It's just nature. Hey, what's with that look? Did you understand what I said? Okay, so this right here. It's not in Legosi's nature to do it. He won't eat meat. <laughs> we know that Legosi is strong-headed, right? and very stubborn and if he were to eat meat after what we've seen him go through it would go against all of his principles to do it right like his whole like there was a whole plot point around that like his whole fight with bill wasn't just about bill it's about it's about what bill doing represented to him right it's about legacy forcing his ideals on other people to justify how he felt at the time because he tried to eat haru right so that would be in contradiction into this persona that legacy's building up for himself right now and i feel that's a double-edged sword even though he's well intentioned and trying to get stronger from what we've seen at legacy he's kind of a he's kind of a hypocrite and kind of as self-aware as he is he's kind of uh, how do i describe it he's kind of oblivious to his own nature sometimes and his own motivations it's, and it's only when other characters like call him out on it that he starts like really um getting very introspective about himself you know because he because that, that's, but that's pretty normal because we have this view of ourselves that that when challenged by other people we tend to fight it but legacy doesn't seem to be that type of character though he actually takes time to think about these types of things anyway 
I understand, but if I were to eat herbivore meat for the purpose of getting strong to protect herbivores, wouldn't that be hypo hypocritical? <laughs> yeah, hypocritical for you, maybe, but but all the carnivore athletes and soldiers are doing it behind closed doors. Okay, so he just said it. Yes, it would be hypocritical, but I don't know, man. I'm in the camp. For me personally, I think it's okay. Under certain circumstances, I think it would be okay for Legosi to eat meat, right? Like, because, the, well, it's in conflict with, I know it's in conflict with this character, and that's kind of what makes it hard, but if he's going to continue with his goal of protecting the herbivores, he needs to be at his strongest, unless there's a workaround at that but if he doesn't then that means like if he's gonna be at a point where he's not at his strongest and like if he gets into a confrontation like he did with the uh, with Tim's killer you know so that's just as deadly as not doing it he can't help anyone if he's dead so there's an argument for it okay so let's continue mm, I really can't bring myself to do it He's raising his eyebrows, but it looks like his mind is already made up. I knew you were going to say that. Your body needs to experience just how unreasonably egotistic your standards are. Your training is going to be much tougher now. Okay, I'll do anything that doesn't involve eating meat. <laughs> we cut to another panel. He's over here struggling not to eat it. The first thing I need to do is to completely overcome my desire for meat. In order to do that, I need to rewire my body to make it so I won't need meat to get stronger. Aw, oh, man. That just won't do. Like, no matter what, that that's an idealistic approach. You can't change what you are. As much as you want to, at the end of the day, Legosi is a great wolf. You don't just change your physiology, right? Eventually... He's gonna have to eat it. That's just that's just nature, and that's okay. Well, yeah, it is okay. It can it can be okay as it stands right now in their world, in their universe, with the laws that are in place, specifically targeting carnivores. Um, and it makes their situation worse. It's not okay, but that doesn't mean it can't it, it can't ever be okay. There has to be a rule. Or some type of circumstance to, to, to make that okay. I don't know. We'll see. I must confront the meat, burden my heart, and when it's over, I have moved on to a new stage. Drool keeps accumulating in my mouth. I'm also having a hard time controlling the thrill I get from smelling it. I've been doing this training routine for three days. I'm constantly filled with the urge to vomit. Time's up. What kind of meat is that? It's cheap meat I bought from the back alley market. It came from a back train camel who died from illness. Ah. Man, do you look pale. You don't look like you can go to school like that. Are you going to quit training? No way. I'll come again tomorrow. Okay. Man, it's easy. Oh, man. I'm trying to figure this out. Like I'm trying to put my I'm trying to put myself in Lego C shoes just to understand how hard this is. I I can kind of because um, I quit meat. Like obviously I'm a human, so I have much more alternatives than this guy right here. But I quit meat for about a year and went pescatarian. And not eating it was hard, but I felt so much better by by like doing the diet and changing it and changing things up. And it was hard acclimating. It was hard acclimating to that, right? Constantly hungry, like, gut biome all messed up. Like, it's just, it's a difficult transition, right? But, but that's the thing, though. I'm a human. I have the option. Legosi doesn't have the option. He absolutely needs it at some point. Even though there are alternatives, he'll never be as strong as he can be. He'll always be weak. Weaker than what he should be. Okay. 
So, you don't want to eat meat and you want to protect herbivores. The world isn't sweet enough to let you get stronger with that naive attitude. You need to sharpen your senses more. You can't change the biological fact that you're a savage carnivore who's tainted by darkness. You need anger, hatred, fear, and stress. You'll need to experience these negative emotions to get stronger. I completely agree with Goeen right there. I like how Goeen's like a real mentor to Legosi here. Because Goeen even said himself that he struggled with this before. Right? And I believe that's why he helps... Man, it's been a while since his introduction chapter, but... You know, that's why he helps like other uh, his other patients and whatnot. That's why he's in this profession so he can help them. So that's pretty interesting. But yeah, um, it's pretty much strengthening your st yourself through strife. That's what that's about. Okay, so we're back at school and we have Pina here. That's awesome. I love seeing Pina's character because every time he's on, like, he gets his own, like, panel and Legosi and him are in the same room, he's an absolute dick to Legosi. Or pretty much just any carnivore that you see. And I absolutely love Pina for it. Senpai, you're looking ugly as hell. Is there something wrong with you? See, we kind of... <laughs> okay. And Lego, she's just like, Ugh, I can't stand this guy. Why is it talking to me? And mind you, like, this is the first, like, Lego, he doesn't usually get this way. Like, his personality is in stark contrast to Louie, right? And we haven't seen Lego, he, like, show open disdain for any herbivores at this point yet, right? So this is, like, kind of a breath of, a breath of fresh air to see how Pina could just affect him in such a way. And his, his expression just says it all. It's just like, <laughs> Not you. You know that I'm your senpai, Pina. That's surprising. Yeah, well, the chief told me, which is why I've decided to call you senpai. Okay, so seriously, are you okay? You cut your fur, so does that mean you have a heart disease or something? You don't need to worry about me. <laughs> if that's if that was true, then what would you do about it? Today, I'm just the guy who's showing you around the stage crew storehouse. I think I'd be nice if you were interested in being part of the stage crew. Yeah, I'm not interested. Really? Sorry. Ah, don't say that. Good grief. This box is full of the costumes we've used till now. And that box was a bunch of... materials inside, hmm? What's this intoxicating smell? Hmm? Hey, can I go now? It smells like a female. It's coming from him. Hmm? What? Your cheek's a bit red. What's wrong? Oh, this? This is kind of embarrassing, but there was this girl who slapped me. We were making out like crazy, but then I called her by some other girl's name. Okay. Yep, that was a huge mistake on my part. Ah, so Pina's one of those characters. He's one of those, uh... Lady killer type characters, yeah. Other girl's name, okay. Is that so... Does that sound so complicated? Lego, see, do you have a girlfriend? This is bad time for that kind of topic. Nope. And he's thinking of Haru, of course. Speaking of Haru... You think she'd be more prevalent? Prevalent. I actually want more Haru chapters, cause um, ever since the Shishigumi arc, she was she's pretty much at the top for uh, for characters. I actually want to see a lot more of her. Okay, but do you like someone? This conversation is over. <sighs> and she's just like nagging him, coming out of her bubble. But why? Where are you going? Damn it! I was trying so hard to forget about her so I could focus on my training. Haru, wait. <laughs> Senpai, you're really pure, aren't you? You're attached to a single girl. That's impressive. It's very dog-like, you know. I can't let him know. I can't let him know what's going on through my mind. I'm here trying to control my desires, and he just does whatever the hell he wants. I'd like to know what it's like to love a girl in a pure way. Okay, so Pina's doing his thing again, right? 
when we we were first introduced to pina um not only is he a contrast to legosi as a character he is the type of character to actually break to actually challenge legosi in a way that other characters have not especially since he is a herbivore right because previously that role was held by louis louis was the one to actually challenge legosi excuse me louis was the one to actually push legosi to come out of his shell and challenge him in certain ways to better himself you know with like like subtle knots of encouragement and stuff like that in his own louis sort louis sort of way but pina doesn't give a fuck pina's like yeah you're gonna i want you to talk to me and i want you to talk to me now you're coming out of your shell you know i want to see i want to see the real you kind of kind of like louis but in his own self-centered sort of way pina's awesome i love seeing him because previously Legosi's exhibited nothing but oh must protect the herbivores but <laughs> does that include all herbivores even the herbivores that you hate because he can't stand Pina right he's gonna Pina's the type of person that's gonna push all those buttons he's gonna he's gonna push all those buttons just because he's just because he can he's gonna try and get under your skin and <laughs> that's what's happening and I love it why do animals get angry when someone isn't dedicated to one single lover? B because it's insin it's sincere. But sincerity is subjective, right? To me, sincerity means enjoying life while being true to yourself. Morals don't really do us much good, you know? Okay, so that's coming from a... When Pina says that, that's coming from a place of privilege, right? Mind you, Beastars is, is very... It's like... It's subtle because you get used to you you get used to these guys being animals, but you have to remember that they are animals. And this, when he's saying this, it's coming from a place of privilege, right? Him, him being born not only just a herbivore, but also beautiful and just having the right body, where his legacy standing in contrast to him is huge and he's monstrous and he has a killer instinct that if he lets off its leash for one second he can hurt somebody he doesn't have that luxury to love freely at least the luxury he doesn't have the luxury of loving freely if it's not another if it's not another uh, carnivore his love is for herbivore Haru so Legacy's using that to kind of like push that narrative that oh I care for all herbivores where in reality it's pretty much just this like well this is how I interpret it it's pretty much just this like teenage hormones going wild and this is how he justifies it you know that's a very teenage thing to do cause you gotta remember Legos he he's still a teenager <laughs> this is what teenagers do if you so, here we have Pina, taunting Legosi again. If you were to eat me alive right now, I wouldn't hate you for it. Let's see. I'll just close the curtains. What? Okay, so he's really getting Legosi's face right now. So, this is kind of like a contrast. Well, it's, I think it's sort of a callback. Uh, because Louie did the same thing where he wanted Legosi to bite him. You know, sh bear his fangs at him and bite him and this is this is Pina wanting pretty much the same thing for Legosi to be himself right and he's pushing Legosi in a corner to, so Legosi could really show his uh his true colors to him right but I don't think Pina really knows what that entails right because as I said before Legosi is not afforded that luxury he cannot When I'm alone with a girl in a dimly lit classroom, <laughs> I feel an uncontrollable urge to kiss her. Senpai, do you feel like eating me right now? You've got a sheep ready to be eaten right in front of you. I've lived 17 years as a male wolf and once again, I've learned a brand new emotion. He fucking hates him. There's no other, like, up until this point we haven't seen we haven't seen Legosi get like pissed off at herbivores, but it would it would be perfectly in line with Legosi's character. And he's saying this is 
a brand new emotion, it would make sense that'd be hatred. Because <laughs> right now, I hate to love Pina, uh, but that's because he's entertaining. But I, I get that luxury because I'm an outside viewer. But Legacy, in his situation, <laughs> there's no love for Pina right now. There's There should be only hate for Pina. A distinctive, seething ah, hatred for herbivores. <laughs> okay. I don't eat meat and I don't have a girlfriend. I'm just a good-for-nothing wolf nobody. Really? Well, if you say so, you're hurting my hand. Right now, as a 17-year-old male, negativity consumes me. Ah, I'm hungry. I'm gonna go to the cafeteria. I wanna eat some vegetables. <laughs> ah, I love this. This is one of the most expressive times we've seen Lego. See, he wasn't even really that expressive during- Well, I see he was. We've seen anger, right? We've seen anger, his anger directed at other carnivores, but we've never seen his anger directed at a herbivore before. And we, and Pina knows Legosi isn't going to do anything. I, I'm pretty sure he, he's done a good job reading him to know that he isn't in any real danger. Because if he was, guaranteed, I'm pretty sure Pina would change his tune. But he knows he has the luxury of getting away with stuff like this. And that's why he has this shit eating grin on his face. I love to see it. And Legos, he can't do a damn thing about it. <laughs> that's just... That's just his privilege. Being born a beautiful herbivore. Compared to the monstrous Legos over here. But that just makes Legos even more relatable to me. So... Yeah. So that's it. That's uh, chapter 63. I had fun doing it. I can't wait to see how the next chapter plays out. Um yeah i will see you then um comment subscribe if you haven't if you want to see more let me know in the comments and i'll see you then see you during chapter 64 bye now oh and hope you had a merry christmas